Corbin's are pretty simple because of Corbin is a, how many atoms of bonding easily can be seen because it doesn't have a lone pair. So depending on how many, uh, uh, what types of bond it makes it, we can kind of guess what type of addition they will take. Where they have to make a four bonds, of course, that's going to be a state three, I don't know if you When they're making a three bonds, and then we'll one of the double ones, that will be the state two. When they make a triple bond, and then that will be the state, right? It's pretty simple. So for instance, if you look at that molecule, this carbon there, obviously these two hydrogens are there. We just do show it in the line in the drawing. You know these things already. This carbon makes a full bond. Two with the hydrogen, one with the nitrogens, another with the carbon. So when the carbon makes an all single bond, four single bonds there, that's going to be sp 3 hydrogenized carbon, right? That's pretty simple. This carbon with the oxygen bond with the double bonds. So that's a double bonded carbon. So when you look at a double bonding carbon, that's going to be the sp 2 hydrogenized carbon. So this oxygen, this carbon, this nitrogen is bonded with sp 2 hydrogenyl, right? What it means is all those oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, they will be on the same plane. That's how the sp 2 will looks like. And then these carbons on the aromatic ring, this carbon having a double bond there, so same thing goes. That's an sp2 hybridized carbon there. Carbons are pretty simple. What makes it a little tricky is our oxygen and nitrogens, so other elements that may have a long tail. So let me show you some of the things that many people fail. So I talk a little bit better. So let's look at this nitrogen here. That nitrogen having one, two, three carbon attached to that, right? Just a three bond. So when a carbon is a three bonds attached to it, typically it has an sp2 and the obion because of one of the bond must be double bond, right? But in the case of the nitrogen, nitrogen has a lone pair. That's something that you cannot forget. The lone pair can actually take the one of the nobilone. So in a way, if you count the lone pairs as substituents, this nitrogen actually have a four substituent, three carbon and one lone pair. So it has to make a four bond. So that's why this nitrogen, that has to be sp3 hybridobilone. So that's the what it is. So you've got to count the lone pair because that's going to go in one of the orbital there. So that's an sp3 nitrogen there. But what about this one? That nitrogen looks identical to this in a way that they got lone pairs that makes a three bond, just like this one. So this one's an sp3, so that one should be sp3 too, right? It looks in the very similar situation, or it's actually the same situation. But this is the one that many people fail to recognize you have to think something else. These nitrogen lone pairs is different from that nitrogen lone pair because the dark one doesn't make conventional structures. On the other hand, this one next to double bonds, they can make a resonance structure. So why this resonance structure changes things suddenly? Because of neither of these two are real, right? So let me tell you, how that you should how you should see it. Let's look at this structure here. If, if you think that this is a real structure, that nitrogen having a single bond, single bond, single bond, and this lone pair can be another uh, orbital there. So that can be sp3 hybridized, just like this one. So if that structure actually exists, then probably it could be sp3 hybridized. But you see here when these lone pairs comes in, make a double bond. And then that pushes one of the electron pairs goes up to make oxygen negative and charge it. That's a resonance of the right okay. That one makes a nitrogen and carbon bonded with a double bond, right? The whole bonded carbon and nitrogen is going to be as sp 2 hybridized, right? So if you look at the top structure here, that's an SP, possible sp 3 But if you look at the bottom structure here, that's going to be sp 2 because it's double bonded. So which one should we choose? We should choose SP2, we should choose SP3, right? That's kind of a dilemma here. 
What I'm trying to tell you that is neither is a real. This nitrogen changes the forms back and forth, back and forth. That's not the picture. These pictures are basically pointing on the equal to this extreme, it could be that extreme, but reality in between. Whatever the type of nitrogen they have, it should satisfy this, it should satisfy that. So, in a way to make both structure possible, this nitrogen should be as a true hybridization. They're not changing hybridization back and forth between the vegetable structures. It's actually what it is, it's one thing, and then this restaurant is trying to explain how things might be if it's if this is an extreme. So in actual cases, sorry, let me show you all again. This double bond there is an SCP2. When the nitrogen gets an SP2 hybrid orbital, then how we should see that one? This is an SP2, that's an SP2, this is an SP2 bond. Where did this long parachute go? So all three SP2 orbitals are used to make a bond with neighboring atoms. So what's that? It's a P orbital. So that lone pairs goes to the P orbitals. So that's how we should see it. And that P orbital, lone pairs, P orbital, that's what makes a double bond anyway. So that's, that explains both possibilities. So that's the reason we consider nitrogen of that situations having an SP2 hybridized. So that's an sp2 hybridized nitrogen not sp3 like this and these lone pairs not in sp3 orbital like this nitrogen that lone pairs are sitting on the pink orbit so you can actually vary for the baby lower bar in the rest of the structures so that is kind of the things that people always miss i would like to explain why it become different and then we're going to look at this aromatic wing one more time just to kind of talk about the very similar things this carbon and carbon this carbon is sp2, that carbon is sp2, right? And these pi ones, they have a p orbital there, they shape their overlapping there. Nitrogen does the same thing. This nitrogen and the carbon makes double bond, p orbital is overlapping. There's another lone pair there. That lone pair is a nitrogen. Where does it go? Does it go to p orbital? No, it, this, p, this lone pair, is, uh, the p orbital is overlapping with that carbon. This lone pair, that's the one that goes in sp2 orbital. Because this nitrogen has a three sp2 orbital. One is used to make a bond with this carbon. Second one is to make a bond with this carbon. The third one is open. That's the very long pair goes in. So that is how this nitrogen keeps their electrons in. And then these electron pairs in the sp2 orbital make this molecule basic. Because you remember that? Lone pairs can be given to take some of the electron electrophile that is considered as a weak space. So that's why this molecule is, especially that part, is behaving as a base. 